Hi guys, welcome back to the Aptos developer course. In our last video, we learned about what Aptos really is. It's a layer one blockchain which has an innovative approach to scalability, safety, and upgradability. We explored how Aptos stands out from other blockchains, particularly Solana, and we even wrote out our first Hello World smart contract and move. Today, we're going to take a look at Aptos through the eyes of Ethereum and Solidity developers. If you've been working with Ethereum, you're in for an exciting ride as we explore how Aptos does things differently. Here's what we're going to cover. We'll compare Aptos and Ethereum, highlighting the key differences you need to know. We'll take a look at Move, which is Aptos's smart contract language, and see how it compares to Solidity. Then we'll get our hands on a practical exercise, which is building a simple DeFi contract on Aptos. And finally, we'll touch on some Aptos-specific development considerations to keep in mind as you start your journey. Remember, we're just scratching the surface today. Think of this as your roadmap for the Ethereum to Aptos transition. All right, let's get into the key differences between Aptos and Ethereum. If you're coming from Ethereum, you'll notice some interesting changes in how Aptos approaches things. First up, let's talk about the account model. In Ethereum, you're used to accounts being simple containers for ETH and having a nonce to prevent replay attacks. Aptos takes a different approach with what we call a resource-oriented model. In Aptos, an account is more like a container for resources. Think of resources as structured data that can represent anything from tokens to complex game assets. This is a fundamental shift from Ethereum's model and it's at the core of how Aptos handles state. For example, in Ethereum, if you want to create a new token, you typically deploy a new contract. In Aptos, you could simply add a new resource to an account. It's a more flexible and intuitive way of representing assets on the blockchain. Now let's talk about the programming languages, Move versus Solidity. If Solidity is your go-to language, Move might feel a bit different at first. Move was designed specifically for secure asset management on the blockchain. One of the big differences is how Move handles resources. In Solidity, you often need to manually implement checks to ensure tokens aren't duplicated or lost. Move, on the other hand, treats these assets as first-class citizens with built-in safety guarantees. Another key difference is in transaction execution and the gas model. Ethereum processes transactions sequentially, while Aptos can execute transactions in parallel. This is a big deal for scalability. As for gas, Aptos uses a different model. Instead of gas prices fluctuating wildly based on network congestion, Aptos aims for more predictable gas costs. This can make life easier when you're trying to estimate transaction costs for your dApps. Now I want to highlight that neither approach is inherently better, they're just different. Each has its strengths and understanding these differences will help you leverage Aptos effectively. As we progress through this course, we'll explore these differences in more depth. For now, keep these distinctions in mind as we move forward. They'll help you understand why certain things in Aptos are done the way they are. All right, first things first, let's talk about the big idea in Move, which is resource-oriented programming. In Solidity, you're used to thinking in terms of state variables and mappings. In Move, we think in terms of resources. A resource in Move is like a super-powered struct. It's a way to represent any asset or important piece of data. Let's break it down with a simple example. Say you're creating a token in Solidity. So let's look at the Solidity code. It's a basic ERC-20 token contract where we store balance in a mapping. Think of it like a database where each address has its associated token balance. We've got some basic token metadata like name and symbol and a constructor to set these up. The transfer function is where the actual token movement happens. It checks if you have enough tokens, subtracts from your balance and adds to the recipient's balance. Pretty straightforward, right? But in Move, it might look more like this. Now, when we look at the Move code, you'll notice some major differences. First, instead of using a mapping for balances, Move uses a resource-based approach through the fungible assets framework. In Solidity, your tokens are just numbers in a mapping that you can modify. But in Move, tokens are actual resources, like physical objects that can't be copied and they can't disappear. They can only be moved around or modified according to strict rules. Notice how the Move code imports various modules and uses a more structured approach with object metadata. Instead of directly manipulating balances like in Solidity, we're working with fungible assets through a predefined framework. The transfer function in Move doesn't directly modify balances. It moves resources between accounts using the primary fungible store. This is a fundamental shift in thinking from state variables and direct balance modifications in Solidity to resource management and structured asset handling in Move. While the end result, which is transferring tokens, is the same, the approach to ensuring safety and correctness is quite different. Now let's talk about ownership and borrowing. If you've used Rust, this might feel familiar. In Move, you don't just access data, you either move it or borrow it. This is different from Solidity, where you're often directly manipulating state. In Move, if you want to change a resource, you need to explicitly borrow it mutably. This helps prevent a whole class of concurrency bugs. One more thing that might trip you up when you're coming from Solidity is that there's no inheritance in Move. Instead, Move uses abilities and generic types to achieve similar results. Now, I know that this is a lot to take in, especially if you're seeing Move for the first time. Don't worry if it doesn't all click right away. 
As we progress through this course, we'll dive deeper into these concepts and you'll get plenty of hands-on practice. The key takeaway here is that Move is designed from the ground up for writing secure, asset-oriented smart contract. It might require a bit of a mindset shift, but once you get the hang of it, you'll find it can make certain tasks much easier and safer. Let's create a super simple lending protocol contract. Think of it like a basic bank. Users can deposit their tokens into a pool and other users can borrow from this pool. Our protocol will handle three main functions. Users can deposit their tokens, check the pool's balance and borrow tokens. This is the fundamental building block of DeFi, which is decentralized finance, where we're creating financial services without traditional intermediaries. Remember, this is a basic example to illustrate move concepts, not a production ready DeFi protocol. Let's start by creating our main module structure. Let's see what you're building here. Our lending protocol struct is at the heart of our protocol. It has a single field balance that keeps track of all deposit tokens using Aptos's coin module. We're using Aptos coin, which is Aptos's native token to keep things simple. Think of this struct as our bank's vault. The key ability means the struct can be stored in global storage. Now let's add a function to initialize our lending pool. This function creates our lending pool. The assert checks if a pool already exists in this address. If it does, it'll fail with error code one. If not, it creates a new pool with zero initial balance. Think of this as setting up our bank vault for the first time. Next comes our deposit function. This function is how users add tokens to the pool. First, it withdraws a specified amount from the user's account, then gets a mutable reference to our pool using borrow global mute, and finally merges the deposit coins into the pool's balance. Now for the core functionality, the borrow function, this is where the magic happens. First, we get a mutable reference to the pool. Then we check if the pool has enough tokens using coin value. If not, it fails with error code two. If we have enough tokens, we extract the requested amount from the pool and deposit them directly into the borrower's account. The move type system ensures we can't accidentally create or lose tokens during this process. Finally, we have our view function. The view attribute is special. It tells us this function just reads data without modifying anything. It's like looking into our pool's balance without touching anything. This is super useful for front-end applications or other contracts that need to check the pool's status. To deploy this to the Aptos DevNet, you'd compile your module and publish it using the Aptos CLI, similar to what we did in our last video. So we'll run Aptos Move Compile with the named address and Aptos Move Publish with the named address again. Now I wanna point out a few things about this code. Notice that we're using resources or lending pool to represent our protocol state. This is the resource-oriented programming we talked about earlier. Then I wanna talk about the acquires keyword in our function definitions. This is Move's way of explicitly stating which global resources a function will access. We're using Move's built-in coin module to handle token operations safely. This is a very basic example and a real DeFi protocol would need a lot more, like handling interest rates, different token types, and much more complex logic. But I hope this gives you a taste of how we can start building DeFi applications and Move. Now that you know a little bit about how things work, let's talk about some Aptos specific considerations you'll want to keep in mind as you start developing. First up, let's talk about security. Aptos and Move bring some unique security aspects to the table. In Ethereum, you often need to manually implement checks to prevent issues like double spending or asset losses. In Aptos, many of these checks are baked right into the language. Move's type system and resource model make it much harder to accidentally introduce these kinds of vulnerabilities. It's like having a guard for your assets. But here's the kicker. This doesn't mean you can code with a free hand. While Move provides these safety guarantees, it's still up to you to design your contract logic securely. Always think about edge cases and potential attack vectors. Now let's talk about Aptos's parallel execution model. This is a big deal for scalability, but it also affects how you should think about your contract design. In Ethereum, you're used to thinking sequentially, one transaction after another. In Aptos, multiple transactions can be processed simultaneously. This means you need to be mindful of how your contracts might behave when different parts are accessed concurrently. The good news here is Move's ownership model helps a lot here. By being explicit about when and how resources are accessed, you're already halfway to writing parallelizable code. Lastly, let's touch on upgrade patterns. In Ethereum, upgrading contracts often involves complex proxy patterns. Aptos takes a different approach. It allows for more straightforward upgrades, but with some important caveats. Modules in Aptos can be upgraded, but resources can't be arbitrarily changed once they're published. This means you need to think carefully about your data structures from the get-go. Plan for extensibility, but also for backward compatibility. Now, I think we're just scratching the surface here. Each of these topics, security, parallelization, and upgrades could easily be its own full-length video, and trust me, we'll get there in this course. All right, guys, we've covered a lot of ground today. Let's do a quick recap of our journey from Ethereum to Aptos. We started by looking at the key differences between Aptos and Ethereum. Remember, Aptos uses a resource-oriented model, which is a big shift from Ethereum's account-based system. We also touched on how Move, Aptos's smart contract language, differs from Solidity. Then we looked at Move programming language. We saw how Move's resource-oriented approach and ownership model can lead to more secure and intuitive asset management. 
We even wrote a simple lending protocol to get a feel for move syntax. We also discussed some move specific development considerations. We talked about how moves built in security features can help prevent common vulnerabilities and how to think about Aptos's parallel execution model and the importance of planning for upgrades from the start. In our upcoming video, we'll get deeper into each of these topics. We'll explore more complex move patterns, discuss best practices for Aptos development and look at real world examples of Aptos applications.